Hey, yo, Chris, where you at? I'm in town. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We are back. Welcome back to the Solo Dolo podcast. You are now rocking Solo Dolo with your boy, Chris Hovers. Good to be back. We switching it up today. We got a different camera. We got the Sony ZV-E10. Um, I usually do other projects with this camera, uh, like vlogging. And I've done a music video so far on this. Haven't edited it yet, but um, this is a smaller camera, but it packs a mighty punch. So hopefully this content still serves you well still looks good i mean i know it looks good i mean any any content shot on like an actual camera is going to look good especially when you light it properly but what i like about this one is that it sits right on my desk because i have the sony remote to it so yeah i just wanted to switch it up um my other camera my 5d sits on a tripod it's big and bulky has an external monitor there's a lot this camera already has a screen that actually turns around so i can see myself so I figured, man, let's switch it up. Let's try to film with this and see what we get out of it. Um, I wanted to have a conversation today, an uh, open dialogue that I thought would be very useful to a lot of young men out there. Uh, I went home recently to visit my family for Thanksgiving and my dad stays in Brandywine, Maryland. And uh, so I, I went out to his. I went out to his house and uh, dang, I just blinked for a second. I went out to his house and I got to see my little brothers and everything, right? My little brothers and this is like my second family. Like I, I, I have my mom side of the family and then my dad's side, of course, with all my brothers, like, and my other sister. Um, yeah, just big family, man, to say the least. But um, <clears throat> my younger brother asked me, um, you know, we had a conversation, me, him and my second mom. I don't call her my stepmom so just for you know fyi um yeah we had a conversation just about you know things that may have separated us over the years uh or conflict you know family conflict that's happened between one another and my brother asked me you know how did i get to this place of being so like in control of my emotions and just i guess emotionally aware and I was kind of working through my understanding of that when he asked me because it's not something that I've been asked before and it's not something that I've reflected on. Uh, I, I haven't sat and actually reflected on it, you know, so um, after having a conversation with him, you know, I thought I should just elaborate more and share my insights uh, on, you know, things that I have found to be helpful for me. And yeah, I thought I thought this would be cool. So we just going to chill. No pressure. You know, have this conversation. Um, you know, he asked me, you know, how do you deal with your emotions or, you know, how are you so in control of your anger or things that make you sad or, you know, when you feel alone or any emotions that make you feel like, you know, not like yourself. Um, <laughs> he's dealt with a lot of anger and it's like the one thing I could recall was times where someone or something made me angry and i had to really sit and feel everything to understand how i wanted to react to those situations and those emotions more importantly um i had a situation where um an ex-girlfriend of mine she got me really mad to where i actually wanted to like you know physically do something about it i'll say that and I've never been in that situation until then. And I remember my mom being present on and, you know, during the day this happened where, you know, my mom actually intervened. Luckily, she was there. And, you know, if if she wasn't there, I probably wouldn't be talking to y'all today, which is crazy. But um, I look back on that and I'm like, dang, man, it doesn't. It's, I've never I don't really get mad like that. Like, I don't get upset. I don't get angry. Like, I don't really express my anger outwardly like that like how i was that day and when i finally came back to myself and calmed down i realized like dang i don't know who i was just now in that specific scenario i didn't know who i was it's like i blanked and it's like i blacked out and like when when my emotions subsided I was able to see everything for what it really was and what I didn't want it to be. And so I vowed to never allow anyone or anything get me that upset ever again, because 
I turned into somebody who I don't even know. I still don't know who that was, you know. So um, if you're in a relationship and that person, your partner at the time is doing something that's making you that upset to where you want to physically react, you don't need to be in that situation. Even if I start feeling like you might get me that upset, I'm going to go ahead and just call it quits. I ain't even trying to like. I'm good. Like, that's just that's just how I'm rocking nowadays. And, uh, you know, after that, after that situation, like I told my brother, I was like, man, I had to sit with myself for a long time. Like I had to get to know who I was when I was alone and I wasn't around everybody to, you know, to bounce off of their opinions and whatnot. I had to really you have to really spend time alone to understand yourself, your emotions and how you react to them, how you react to situations. And, uh, that was the best answer I could give him at the time. But I had to also remember that I had tools along the way. Like my little brother grew up with my dad for the most part. And I grew up with my other dad. Um, and so it's like, I had to explain to him, there are certain pieces of advice that I could that resonated with me growing up, whether it was from my biological father or my other dad. And I had to learn as a young man who was developing to take heed to what advice resonated and what advice didn't and understand that every man is going to be able to every man or person, regardless of how they're trying to impart their wisdom onto you, they're going to have some things that don't really resonate with you that much. And then they're going to have some other things that do. But um, what I really had to do, what I was fortunate enough to to stumble into was a group of guys who were older than me and, you know, or at least around the same age as me who shared their insights. And I was able to pick from all these different perspectives on what it meant to be a man. Like my brother was telling me, like, bro, I don't know how to I don't have any example of like what being a man actually is on a on a on a more detailed level. Like nobody tells you how to become more in control of your emotions. They don't tell you what sitting with your feelings looks like and feels like, you know what I'm saying? Like I had to explain to him a lot of the times where I was alone and I had to deal with my own emotions. It was literally just me sitting through uncomfortable feelings while something that just happened to make me feel uncomfortable or upset was just it, it just was what it was. And I had to sit and accept certain parts of that and understand what i could and couldn't control and i think that is where you start to find your peace if you will um another big part of me coming into myself as a man and really gaining control over my emotions was listening to the audiobook of the way of the superior man that book teaches it taught me a lot as far as how to understand masculine and feminine energy, especially with the fact that we all hold both, you know, and I didn't want to lead this video with that topic, with that conversation, because a lot of people are just like, oh, masculine, feminine, ooh, be in tune. But it's like, nah, like on some real stuff, the book breaks down masculine and feminine energy and how they work together. And the principles, the masculine and feminine principles of how those energies work. So when you understand that, um, you start to move a little different. Like one of the things that the book talks about as a man, you have to look at the world, women and the ocean and feminine energy. You have to look at them all the same. Like, look, look at look at women, feminine energy in the world as the ocean. You can't control the ocean. However, you can harness some of its power. We can build dams, rivers, you know, lakes if we if we wanted to or whatever the case may be. Use it for irrigation systems, plumbing, all that stuff. Right. But we can't control it. We can't make the ocean just sit still. We can't. You know, we can't control the motion of it. We can navigate over it. Um, we can admire it from afar, but controlling it is something that we can't do like physically right um but with structure you can harness some level of control over its properties and what it what it offers us as far as resources right so 
when dealing with a woman, for example, uh, the book mentions how and I don't want to get too deep into the book. If you you know, if you really, really interested in that book, take a deeper dive and go listen to it for yourself. Cause you might come up with some other insights that I didn't even come come up with myself. But um, one of the things that the book says is that feminine energy will always challenge you. And it speaks to how women can be more emotionally reactive to a situation than a man has to be right so we're not we can't when you see a dude acting out or responding emotionally a lot of people say oh he acting like a female he acting like a girl and in reality yeah he in his feminine right now you know what i'm saying he's more in tune with his emotions it's that energy and motion right and i know that sounds cliche but your masculine energy is rooted in logic and and, and thinking you know forward thinking so you may get a situation that upsets you emotionally but if you use your logical perspective to see it from a different angle you'll under you'll better understand why it happened in the first place so my little brother and my my mom we we were all talking and there were a lot of things that happened between them that they had to debunk and unpack to understand that like dang i reacted emotionally to you i didn't consider that side of your you know i didn't consider your perspective at that time and what you were going through and how you saw the situation but now that we're here emotions are aside and it even got a little emotional but it was like in a good way um now that we're able to have the conversation we can better connect and now i understand like that's what my brother got from it and, and i'm sure my mom did too but they got a lot more understanding from the conversation because they used a logical approach as to how how to view or perceive what actually happened between them you know so um yeah i, I really just tried to tell that to my brother like i i i really i think the more you are able to change your perspective on a given situation for the better. And when I say for the better, I mean, change your perspective, see it in a way that is positive and matches where you want to be, the, the trajectory of where you want to go. That is how you become more in tune with your emotions and more. Um, that is how you make better decisions with the emotions that you already have you don't want to make decisions rooted or you know coming out of emotion you don't want you don't want your foundation of your decision making to be emotional because you may feel one way one minute and then the next you don't even feel that way anymore those feelings have passed so that's why i what i told my brother is emotions are just meant to be felt and understood that's it they just teach us what we like and what we don't like or what we prefer to be around, what we prefer not to be around, what resonates with us, what doesn't resonate with us, what feels good, what doesn't feel good. And you have to take the information from that and move accordingly. You know what I'm saying? If somebody is disrespecting you or they just talk nasty to everybody, you probably not going to stay around them if you don't want to be around that type of energy. So. Even if somebody's coming at me like disrespectfully, it's like, dang, I may feel offended, but it's a better and a much healthier approach for me to actually sit and analyze. Like, does this person really have any logical reason to come at me how they are? Or is there something deeper behind why they are this way? You know what I'm saying? So, um, yeah, you really have to take time to sit with yourself and understand why you're feeling what you feel where it's coming from the root of it all and then learn how to let it pass like learn how to learn how to allow your emotions to pass learn how to allow your emotions to pass because if you make decisions based on where your emotions are where you are emotionally you will make decisions that you quite not <laughs> quite how do i want to say this you'll make decisions that you you'll wish you hadn't you'll make decisions that you'll regret for sure so um 
to all my young brothers out there, take your time with understanding yourself and your emotions. You're not alone. Um, your perspective is everything. Perspective is everything at the end of the day. I think the deeper me and my brother get into that conversation, I'm going to try to bring it up again on the podcast. But I think it's very important that young men, especially. Start to spend time alone and understand the things that hurt you and why. Like, why did you feel so strongly about that? Why did it hurt you that much? Don't run from it, you know, like. You you kind of have to confront a lot of those things. That is the only way to actually understand them. It's your boy, Chris Hubbard. I think that's all I have to say for today. Yeah. Peace. Blessings on to you. Hey, yo, Chris, where you at? I'm in town.